paramount doesn't care about fair use law. So, after a rather hectic episode 8 in which Chief was fucked up by the other Spartans, Cortana went rogue, and Frosk still doesn't look as bangable as Olivia Munn, we return for the grand finale of the first season. Will it end on a bang, or a rather pathetic whimper? There's only one way to find out. Let's get into the finale. So after a rather savage beating from the UNSC military, Frosk changes her mind and realises human are scum. I don't blame her. After some of the shows you motherfuckers have put me through, I share her sentiment. Anyway, she escapes with the artifact in a phantom that she somehow knows how to fly. Let's just, let's, let's just not. I'm in a good mood today, so let's, you know, let's keep it that way. So moving on, Chief then tells the other Spartans that they were kidnapped and they get upset. Oh, for fuck's sake, really? They have hormone inhibitors, so they are unable to feel emotion. Or did the writers pull a rings of power and forget what they fucking wrote down? I just... How can they be upset about something when they have no knowledge of what they are upset about? Unlike Chief, they have no access to their memories. So they have no fucking idea what a normal childhood is like. Like, How can you be upset about a world you have no knowledge of? Just... Fuck's sake, that good mood didn't last long, did it? Jesus. Anyway, whilst this bullshittery is going on, Halsey and fucking Igor here are trying to escape. Their attempt is then foiled by Kai-127 breaking onto the ship and confronting the Doctor. And for some reason, she also takes her fucking helmet off. I just... What is it with Spartans for going 20 plus years of training just to get some sun on their faces? You're in a hostile situation and the first thing you do is take off the piece of armour that is protecting the most vulnerable part of the body. I mean, what is logic? You know, we, we don't need common sense. She also didn't seem to remember the dude that just ran off a second ago. I mean, this is a UNSC ship after all, so there will be firearms on board. But I'm sure she'll be fine. Luckily, this supposed scientist is the biggest dumbass in the sector. He definitely lied on his CV, because he decided to hit Kai-127 on the back with what looks to be some sort of blunt object. You have a myriad of weapons to use, her head is exposed, and you chose this. We then finally see the scene in which Chief arms himself and becomes, you know, the Chief. In order to save humanity, they are trekking to Covenant Space in order to find the halo ring that the artifact has led everybody towards. Whilst this is going on, we see the Covenant for the first time in fucking ages, as they now have both the keystones. I almost forgot they existed in the show. You know, Halo, in which they are the main antagonist. These riots are fucking shit. They should be in the mind of the audience at all times. They're meant to be a huge threat, for fuck's sake. At least the Chief finally finds his helmet. I mean, he must have lost it for the last four episodes. Yeah, I'm sure that's why he never fucking wore it. Anyway, him and Silver Team do a halo jump. High altitude, low opening. Ah, see what they did there? Ah, clever, eh? So after nine episodes, we finally see something badass. The squad infiltrate the holy planet of the Covenant, and when they are compromised, hundreds of elite zealots climb the mountain to attack Silver Team. After kicking some serious ass, Chief meets his nemesis. Helmets. No, I'm joking. It's Craig. But like the majority of modern day feminists, Frosk decides to ruin the fun. She touches the keystone and reveals the location of the halo to everybody in the vicinity. So we have to watch this stupid fucking scene instead. And the writers take a note out of the Rangs of Powers book, as Frosk states, get ready for this. <clears throat> Don't you see, the keystones were not to lead us to the weapon, but to each other. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I just... The cringe. The stupidity. Let's just... <laughs> let's just move on because either I laugh or I cry like big baby Igor. Thankfully, whilst this conversation is going on, Kai shoots Frosk. Which, I mean, if she wasn't gonna, I fucking was. Anyway, Frosk then dies, Riz gets hit with a plasma grenade, Vanek gets hit by a whole fucking host of Arsenal, and Chief is alone whilst his squad are incapacitated. Cortana tells Chief he only has two options, save Silver Team or save the artifacts. 
Chief then decides to tell Cortana to just take over and calculate a plan to do both, meaning Chief is now willingly giving himself to Cortana. But in order for this to happen, Chief has to die first, so that Cortana can basically reboot him and then assume control. So Chief is killed by Sigma male Craig and is rebooted by Cortana, and holy shit, it took nine fucking episodes. But we finally see what we wanted, a stoic, silent Chief kicking ass and taking names. I mean, covenant names are like fucking Klingon, so I don't know how we would spell the names or write them down, but th 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 the point stands. John's death is confirmed when his husk lifts the artifact, but nothing happens, showing that there is no neural activity within Chief. It's simply a suit that Cortana is now controlling. Silver Team are saved, the artifact is with Chief, Halsey somehow escaped, and is now wanted dead or alive. When Kai asks the Chief what the plan is, he simply looks at her and doesn't respond, proving beyond a doubt that Cortana is now in control. And that's it. This show is the most annoying adaptation of a video game or book I have ever seen, and it was easily the most inconsistent show I have seen in a long time. It had very brief moments where it was easily a 9 out of 10, but it would then follow those amazing moments up with shit that made it a 1 out of 10. As you can tell by the changing of my voice throughout this series, it was really fucking frustrating to watch. But to all of the YouTubers out there saying this is an absolute pile of shit and every episode was trash, unwatchable and completely irredeemable, you're either wrong or you're manufacturing outrage for clicks. Was it what I as a diehard Halo fan wanted? Absolutely not. As I stated, Quan had no fucking business being in this show and the entirety of episode 7 does not belong and should be erased from existence. If only I could fucking erase it from my memory. But to anybody out there giving this anything above a 3, I seriously question your motives. And if you gave this a 1, then you clearly haven't seen The Rings of Power or Blood Origin, because this shit is Shakespeare compared to those utter fucking dumpster fires. Whereas The Rings of Power was made for absolutely nobody's benefit, the best way to think about Season 1 of Halo is as an extremely unnecessary prequel to the first game. It sets up the infrastructure for the world we all know and love, and it does that to an acceptable degree, I suppose. But do you really need to watch this if you're a Halo fan? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, what I gathered from my multiple viewings of Season 1 is that this seems to have been made for those that aren't fans of Halo in order to get them on board with the franchise without being so overwhelming that it borders on alienating. And whilst I am aware that will be really frustrating to people like myself and you watching who live and breathe this iconic franchise, it would seem Season 2 is where they clearly intend to truly begin the story of the Master Chief that we know and idolise. So that, my friends, is where us diehard Spartans will join the fight. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the first season of Halo. I hope you're all doing well, and as always, take care.